Most knife reviewers simply don't care, or maybe they're not aware of the most important problem in the knife industry today. If you're a knife reviewer, this video is for you. Please watch the whole thing. Help me start a revolution that will make the knife industry better for us all. Not only better by a little bit, but genuinely better for everyone. Please consider watching this entire video. To those of you who are not reviewers, please pass this on to your favorite knife reviewer. Ask them to start doing what we're going to talk about in this video. Hi friends, my name is Jake. This is Canadian Cutting Edge. There is a problem in the knife industry and it's, in my opinion, a huge problem and it looks like everybody's ignoring it. It looks like you're ignoring it. Do you want to help me fix it? Let me tell you what this problem is. The problem is when I buy a knife and I want to review it, the most important part of this knife is this cutting edge. Hopefully you agree that that's the most important part. If the edge is just garbage, it doesn't matter how wonderful the action is, doesn't ma matter how beautiful the design is, how smooth the action is, if you got a crappy cutting edge, it's just not going to be a good knife. Now, most of you know me, I'm a budget knife guy. I tend to focus on knives that are around 60 US dollars or less. The odd time I review knives that cost a little bit more, I think the most expensive knife was a Blade Runner Systems knife uh, worth about 300 or 400 dollars US. And I've reviewed a number of other knives that are in the hundreds. And what I have found is not only do a lot of knives have a thick you know, blade right behind the cutting edge, Another systemic problem is the grind angles are just a mess. Just in the last month when I was reviewing knives, most of the knives that I reviewed had at least a four or five degree change of angle from one end, like the heel of the blade, to the tip of the blade on at least one side of each of the knives. It's just nuts. I've been recording this. I've got a worksheet that I go through and I've got over a hundred pages of the knives that I've got listed here. I measure the grind angle at the heel of the blade. I measure the grind angle at the tip of the blade. I measure the grind angle everywhere along the blade. Posted is a video, and I've got the links down below as well and in the comments on how I measure the grind angles. If you've got a way of measuring the grind angles, I am challenging you. Start measuring the grind angles on at least four points along the blade, and then start telling your audience what you find. Why? I want us to start pressuring knife companies to do a better job. That's as simple as it is. The only way they're going to do a better job is if we start complaining and we start complaining publicly. I don't like a knife to just be able to cut a piece of paper on a screen because that is not all that meaningful. Because I can make a knife cut a piece of paper fairly well. I can make it look terrible if I want to as well. That's not the point. The point isn't how sharp is the edge, although that is a point. The main point is how well is it sharpened. Now maybe you don't agree with me. I'm hoping you do. Maybe you don't care how well it's sharpened, just let it sharp. I want to pressure knife companies into doing a good job of sharpening, not just of how sharp the edge is on a sharpness test, but on how consistent the grind angle is along the edge and <laughs> what that grind angle is along the edge. I want to start pressuring the knife companies to start doing that, providing knives that have a really good edge so that when the novice gets a knife or gets into the hobby, he gets a new knife, it cuts well, and he listens to the advice, well, match the factory grind angle. Well, he can. Okay, let's get to the tabletop, and I'm going to show you some examples of some of the knives I've reviewed recently and the angles that they were sharpened to at the factory. Please keep watching. I buy the knives I review and then I sell them. I have to sell them so that I can buy some more knives to review. You can find all these fairly recently on my channel. This is the Sencut Honoris. Yeah, they made the edge nice and thin, but how about these grind angles? On this side, it started at the heel at 30.1 degrees. Yes, 30.1 degrees. Ended at the tip at 25 and a half degrees. 4.6 degrees of change along the length of that blade. Isn't that nuts? Well, this side's a bit better. 24.1 to 25.7, 1.6 degrees of change. There are knife reviewers who have been doing this game for decades or, you know, a decade or more. I've never seen a video where they talk about this issue. Why not? 
Do they not care? Is it negligence? Is it incompetence? Do they just want to get views at whatever cost? Or do they really want to tell their viewers exactly what's going on with the most important part of the knife? It's not just low budget knives. Let me share an example with you that costs like 160 bucks. This is by Ferrum Forge Design, uh, made by We Knives. This was sold uh, through Mastrop. Of course, they're going to try to make the knife the same way as they do for everybody else. The grind angles on this thing, at the heel of this side, it started at 26.8 degrees. It ended at the tip at 24.3 degrees. So that's several degrees of change along the length of that side. This side started off a bit better, 20.1 degrees here, but it ended at 16.6 .6 degrees. 16.6, 26.8, over 10 degrees variability across this knife. Is that what you guys are paying for? That's not what I want to be paying for. I want to be paying for something that's sharpened well, not just something that'll cut through paper on screen, but something that's got a good grind angle everywhere. How about a fixed blade? We know cold steel. Yes, this is a really low cost knife, but the angles on here, it started at 14.2 degrees up here, 14.1 in the middle, ended at 19.2. 5.1 degrees of change along the length of this, 5.1 degrees. This side's a bit better. It started at 19, ended at 15.3, so 3.7 degrees of change along there. So you can't just say, well, that's okay on a low cost knife, because I don't think it's okay on any knife. It's fairly easy to fix on this knife, but I shouldn't have to. Now, this is a budget San Remu knife, but I've seen it on more expensive San Remu knives too. This guy started at 10.9 degrees over here and went to 15.7. Yes, 10.9 over here. That's 4.8 degrees of change along the length. On this side, it started at 12.2 degrees over here and went to 12.0 degrees. So, hey, at least it's consistent, but 12 degrees? Come on. You want to see something more expensive, something that doesn't come out of China? Okay, here we go. This is from ANV Knives in the Czech Republic. It doesn't have as much of a uh, angled, you know, variability problem. 27.1 degrees. So the problem is the actual angle to 28 and a half degrees. This side, 27.5 degrees over here, 26.2 degrees here. So 1.3 degrees of change. Yeah, this is not a cheap little knife. Would you want to match the grind angles on this? Would you be happy with it? Just keeping it at 26, 27 degrees per side, well over 50 degrees trying to cut through stuff? I don't think you'd be happy with that in the long term. You shouldn't be happy with it when it's brand new either. Just two more. Here's the Max Ace Kestrel K. So it's the budget version of the Kestrel. The grind angles on this guy, on this side, it starts at 25.4 degrees and goes to 19.1 degrees. 6.3 degrees of change along the length here. This side's a whole lot better. Started at 20.4 degrees, ended at 20 degrees, so 0.4 degrees change. So they can, they can do a good job. This side's proof that they can do a good job. But they didn't do a good job. And finally, let's do this one. This is the Maguron Acri 2. They've been making lots of Acris, and some of the Acris are more expensive than others. This guy here started at 20.8 degrees, went to 20.3 degrees, but it was 16.7 degrees in the middle. 4.1 degrees of change in that tiny little distance. Uh, this side, put your seatbelts on, guys. Last but not least, 29.8 degrees and ended at 35.5 degrees. 5.7 degrees of change. I hope you get the point. Let's band together. Let's start telling the whole world what we're finding. To do that, we have to measure the grind angles. You can buy devices to measure grind angles. They cost a little bit. But if you've got a sharpening system, you know, where you clamp the knife on, you can measure grind angles. It's very easy. Just watch that video. You know, I linked it before. I'll link it again up here and at the very end. It's very easy to measure grind angles and you know, measure all the way along and see if it's consistent. You know, like it was okay until you got right to the middle and then there's a big change. Tip and heel isn't enough to measure because the change might be somewhere else. Yeah, I'm frustrated and I want to fix the system. 
Can they do better? Of course they can. Just look at Mora knives. Mora can make knives that cost under 20 bucks US. And the entire Scandi grind is exactly the same angle all the way along because they use robotics. Now, I'm not saying every knife company has to use robotics, but what they really need to be pressured into doing is to start measuring this so that their employees who are sharpening the knives do a better job. That's all I'm asking. The only way they're going to change is if you and I pressure them to change. And the best way to pressure them is to make it public knowledge. Let everybody know what's going on. Maybe they'll fix it. Thank you to my supporters. If some of you guys are still watching and not just these uh, YouTube reviewers and uh, knife reviewers of other uh, venues or platforms, I appreciate everything that you guys do for me. Thanks for liking, sharing. Please share this video. Leave a comment. That helps it get spread around even more. The comments drive how much YouTube shares videos. So please leave a comment of any kind. And remember, always cut towards your chum, not your thumb.